Our today's topic is viral conjunctivitis. Adenoviral conjunctivitis, viral conjunctivitis secondary to adenoviruses is highly contagious, and the risk of transmission has been estimated to be 10% to 50%. Incubation and communicability are estimated to be 5 to 12 days and 10 to 14 days, respectively. Between 65% and 90% of cases of viral conjunctivitis are caused by adenoviruses, and they produce two of the common clinical entities associated with viral conjunctivitis, pharyngoconjunctival fever, and epidemic keratoconjunctivitis. Pharyngoconjunctival fever is characterized by abrupt onset of high fever, pharyngitis, and bilateral conjunctivitis, and by periauricular lymph node enlargement. Epidemic keratoconjunctivitis is more severe and presents with watery discharge, hyperemia, chemosis, and ipsilateral lymphadenopathy. Lymphadenopathy is observed in up to 50% of viral conjunctivitis cases and is more prevalent in viral conjunctivitis compared with bacterial conjunctivitis. Herpes virus conjunctivitis, herpes simplex virus comprises 1.3% to 4.8% of all cases of acute conjunctivitis and conjunctivitis caused by the virus is usually unilateral. Primary HSVL infection in humans occurs as a nonspecific upper respiratory tract infection. HSV spreads from infected skin and mucosal epithelium via sensory nerve axons to establish latent infection in associated sensory CNV and its ganglia. Latent infection of the trigeminal ganglion occurs in the absence of recognized primary infection, and reactivation of the virus may follow any of the three branches. Viral conjunctivitis secondary to adenoviruses is highly contagious, and the risk of transmission has been estimated to be 10% to 50%. Patients commonly refer contact with an individual with red eye or they may have a history of recent symptoms of an upper respiratory tract infection. Incubation and communicability are estimated to be 5 to 14 days for both clinical forms. When primary ocular HSV infection occurs, the patient typically manifests unilateral discharge, thin and watery, and sometimes accompanying vesicular eyelid lesions. In a small percentage, there is history of external ocular HSV infection that may lead to the diagnosis. Pharyngoconjunctival fever presents by abrupt onset of high fever, pharyngitis, and bilateral conjunctivitis, and by periauricular lymph node enlargement. Epidemic keratoconjunctivitis is more severe and presents with watery discharge, conjunctival membranes or pseudomembranes, hyperemia, chemosis, and ipsilateral lymphadenopathy. Lymphadenopathy is observed in up to 50% of viral conjunctivitis cases and is more prevalent in viral conjunctivitis compared with bacterial conjunctivitis. The eyelids often are edematous and echematic. Cutaneous or eyelid margin vesicles, or ulcers on the bulbar conjunctiva the cornea often demonstrates a punctate epitheliopathy. In severe cases, there can be a corneal epithelial defect dendritic epithelial keratitis. It typically begins in one eye and progresses to the fellow eye over a few days. It is important to note that conjunctivitis caused by herpes virus do not form conjunctival membranes or pseudomembranes. Herpes zoster virus can involve ocular tissue, especially if the first and second branches of the trigeminal nerve are involved. Eyelids are the most common site of ocular involvement, followed by the conjunctiva. Corneal complication and uveitis may be present in 38.2% and 19.1% of cases, respectively. Severe forms include those presenting with Hutchinson sign, vesicles at the tip of the nose, which has high correlations with corneal involvement. Although no effective treatment exists, artificial tears, topical antihistamines, or cold compresses may be useful in alleviating some of the symptoms topical antibiotics should not be indicated in due they do not protect against secondary infections, and their use may complicate the clinical presentation by causing allergy and toxicity, leading to delay in diagnosis of other possible ocular diseases and they can even increase the risk of spreading the infection to the other eye from a contaminated dropper. Complications should be investigated if symptoms do not resolve after 7 to 10 days because of the risk of complications. Herpes virus conjunctivitis. Topical and oral antivirals are recommended to shorten the course of the disease. Acyclovir. 3% ophthalmic ointment 200, 400, 800 mg 5x per day for 10 days. 200 mg, 5 ml suspension, 400 mg, 5x per day for 10 days, 5% dermatologic ointment, 6x per day for 7 days.